You're listening to The Cryptid Creature Show. If you're a fan of the show, go and check out our new Patreon site. You'll get access to our private Discord server, exclusive merchandise, access to all live streams and Q&As, discounts on merch from The Cryptid Creature store, and get a chance to be a guest host during one of the show's recordings. Just go to www.patreon.com slash crypticcreatures1. Thank you for listening and supporting the show. I noticed something on the side of the tree, and I thought it was a black squirrel. I was like, wow, there's a black squirrel. And I'm looking, well, instead of a black squirrel, it was a black hand. My mind was like everywhere at this point. I was like, what is this? What is going on? So I kind of started easing off, back and down, trying to get out of the area, put some distance between us. I turned around and looked, and there was this creature standing there on a dead stair. This is the Cryptid Creature Show. I am Brian, and with me as always, my co-host, Todd. What's up, buddy? Hello, my friend. How are you doing? It's great to be here tonight. Yep. Always good. So tonight's guest is Tom. Hi, Tom. And Tom hails from the state of Pennsylvania. What is going on in Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania is starting to become a very popular state. Yes, it is. on our show. Yeah, we got a bunch of them. It's just... A hot spot. It is a hot spot. Ones that we haven't even dropped yet. We've got we've got recordings out there. Just waiting know, in the wings. Waiting in the wings. So yeah, the Pennsylvania is just becoming more and more popular state with us. Especially the southwestern part, which is where Tom's from. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're gonna bring Tom on and talk about he's had a couple different Bigfoot encounters and they're pretty interesting, amazing encounters. So but before we do that, Brian, before we do that. A little bit of cryptid trivia. Cryptid trivia. Okay. We're gonna, we, need a, we're gonna need a jingle for that. I think we put this out there. We are. Cryptid I think we put this trivia. out there for the uh, members episode. I think we did one for them, but we're gonna start doing them uh, here on the regular episodes. So cryptid trivia. We will ask the question here in the beginning of the show, and then okay. I will give the answer. I'll give you a chance to answer, and you can give the answer at the end of the show. Okay. So. This episode's trivia question is, of all the states that have the most Bigfoot reports, what state comes in number three as the high as the third highest state of Bigfoot sighting report? You want to take a guess? Indiana. Indiana is not correct, but that's okay. So we'll, we'll announce that in the show. Let's not waste any more time. These guys are ready right. to hear these encounters. Let's bring Tom on. What do you say? Yep, let's get him. Hello? Hey, Tom. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good, man. It's Todd and Brian. How you doing, bud? I'm um, hanging in there. Long morning so far. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you said you get up and you, you have uh, cattle and stuff you feed over there or what? Yeah, I uh, I have three farms. They total about eighteen hundred acres. So wow. I got horses, cows, uh, some pigs, a little bit of everything. Cool. Wow. What, cool. What state are you in? Pennsylvania, Southwest. Okay. Okay. okay got gotcha. you. Well, thanks for being here and talking to us today. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been looking forward to doing this with you. Us too. Us too. Oh, good. Yeah, us too. So you're in Southwest Pennsylvania. You've had, I think you've had more than one uh, encounter with Bigfoot, haven't you? Yeah, I, um, well, I had an encounter, an encounter back in, oh, I think it was 83. And I never really spoke of it because I was kind of sworn to secrecy. But I've had two sightings, we'll say recently, a male and a female, and they were both on my property. Well, once you start with the first encounter that you had, are you talking about the recent ones or no, the, the one back in '83? The the one the first one that you had. When did you say that happened? Um, back in '83. Okay. Why don't you okay. start with that one and tell us tell us that one, and we can go into the next one then. Sure, 
sure. Um, I was 12 years old, and my grandfather and I, we did a lot of stuff in the outdoors. So we were up in Emporium, Pennsylvania, which is um, like along the Allegheny National Mountains, uh, the National Forest there. Um, and we had we go back way back in, I think it's almost two and a half hours to a native brook trout stream pretty much in the middle of nowhere down in this deep valley. And, um, that's where it happened. Um, oh, I would say it took us a good hour and a half just to get to the top of the valley. And then going down into the valley, it was an old logging road, but the way it was cut, the vehicles must've been real narrow because like half of the tires on the passenger side were literally hanging in the air. And I, it had to be a 200 foot roll down over this hill into this valley. If you, if you messed up and on a driver's side, you kind of scratched along the, the hillside. That's how narrow this was. So it was every bit an hour to get down into this valley. And, uh, once we got down in there, it kind of opened up and the ground was just covered with all these different mosses and just plants and stuff I'd never seen before. Mountain laurel, and big, huge glacier rocks. And when I say huge, I mean bigger than houses sticking out of the hillside. And this little creek like meandered down through up under the rocks. And I mean, it was loaded with trout. So that's where we started. And, you know, being 12 years old, I was kind of chomping at the bit to fish. So the old man was like, yeah, don't go too far. I'll set up. So fast forward a little bit, he got all set up and he said, well, I'm going to go down the stream. You go up the stream. We'll meet up later tonight. So I started up the stream and it kind of wound left, wound right. You know, again, there was all these glacier rocks. This just felt like I was in a, I don't know, in, in a, a land that nobody had been in for forever. I mean, it, it was just so pristine and so beautiful. And as I went further and further up the creek, I noticed that the valley started getting more narrow and the rocks started getting bigger and closer together. Well, I'd come across a spot where a tree fell down and it kind of washed out and made a really deep hole. And it was loaded with big trout. So I decided to fish there. I'd been fishing for about probably an hour and I heard a, a, a limb or a, or a stick snap behind me. And all I could think of was a bear, you know, because I had no I had no clue what a Sasquatch was. You know, uh, that, that never even crossed my mind. So I looked around real good. I didn't see anything. I went back to fishing. Well, the next one I heard was a lot louder and a lot closer. So I decided that I was really going to look around. I didn't want to be surprised by a bear. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I noticed something on the side of the tree and I thought it was a black squirrel. And I was like, wow, there's a black squirrel. And I'm looking, well, instead of a black squirrel, it was a black hand. And my mind was like everywhere at this point. I was like, what is this? What is going on? So I kind of started easing off back and down, trying to get out of the area, put some distance between us. Well, the more I moved, I could hear it moving. So I started running. And I mean, I was elbows and tennis shoes. I was getting out of there. And I don't know if I tripped myself up or if I hit a log or what the case may be, but I went down. And as I was getting back up, I turned around and looked, and there was this creature standing there on a dead stair. And I was like, wow like froze for a minute, but not long enough to, to be caught up to because I took off and I'd beat feet. Now it was a pretty good distance back to the truck. Once I seen the truck, I, I figured I was okay. I got into the truck. I laid on a horn and I mean, I was on that horn trying to get the old man's attention and I could see in the rear view mirror. There wasn't just one of them. There was three of them. I'm just panic stricken at this point in the process of this. I look through the windshield now and here comes the old man running. I look beyond him and there was a Sasquatch 
tailing him. He got into the truck. Not a word was spoken. I think we made it up out of that valley in record time. I mean, the whole side of the truck was scratched up. Never once, you know, all the way down, I was panicking, thinking, we're going to roll, we're going to roll, we're going to roll. That thought never even crossed my mind on the way up out of there. And I mean, we beat beat out of there as fast as that, that truck could go. We got up to the top, and he paused for a minute. And we kind of sat there for a second. And I think he was kind of just kind of gathering his composure. And we continued on. Now, mind you, this is an hour, hour and a half ride up out of this mountain. The whole time we were on our way out, I could see him paralleling us on each side. Every once in a while, you would see him pop out. And then towards the middle of it, they weren't even trying to stay behind the trees. They were just there, letting us know that they were there. Now, there's an area up there that has like three glacier rocks that have come together and they kind of make like an alcove, like a, just like a little indentation spot. And there were at least five behind that, that set of rocks there. Now, of course, I, I, I can't give a hundred percent total accurate number because of course I was just freaked out at the moment. Those creatures stayed with us almost all the way to the hard top. We got down, we got on a hard top. Now up at an emporium, you know, the towns are pretty scarce. Um, Half hour, 45 minutes apart. We got to the first little town and the old man said to me, you have to promise me you will never say anything about this. Not a word to anybody. They'll think we're crazy. They'll lock us up. They'll take us away. You know, this is back in 83. That wasn't something you spoke of, you know. Um, So that's pretty much, in a nutshell, what happened in 83. Yeah, that's terrifying. Did you guys talk about about his problem and your problem? Did you guys discuss the whole incident with each other at least, or did you? Not a word. Wow. So he didn't know. Not a word. He didn't know how you got to the truck. He didn't tell you how he got chased by this thing. Nothing like that. Just it was like, oh man. No, that's what I was saying. The, the the other thing I did, this is the first time I've spoke of this since 83. You know, I was sworn to secrecy and unfortunately he's passed on now. And I thought maybe it was safe to speak about it, you know, especially with my other two incidents. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I kind of confirmed that I wasn't crazy. We totally believe you. We know that they're out there. We know people are seeing them. We've been hearing it too much. Right. Yeah. One. What people don't understand, if you if you've never gone up into the mountains, yeah, there's that blacktop road, and all of a sudden, boom, it turns to dirt. And when it turns to dirt, yeah. those roads can just be terrible. Just ruts everywhere, like you said, just real narrow, hanging off the side, and you can't travel very fast down these things. You'll beat your car, no. up or you'll go off the side. And yeah, they were like built for horse and buggy. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So there's not, it's not a fast way out, but apparently you guys didn't care. You just were ready to get out of there and I don't blame you. Oh, we put a lot of abuse into that truck that day. (laughs) Yeah, I bet. Well, take us into what happened to you next. Let's hear the next encounter you had. Okay. So I guess we'll say fast forward. This is, uh, oh, I think it was 2013 and we had the early archery season. So I decided I was going to go to this spot on my property that, I wanted to set up a little bit of a ground blind because I knew there were a lot of deer traveling through there. So grabbed my pack and I went down and it was about all 250, 300 yards from the road where I park. And I get down there, I find my spot and I'm kind of hammering these little tacks into like loops into the tree so I can hang my burlap. Well, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes into it, something started knocking back. And I'm thinking, well, they're working down over the hill. That's got to be what it is, they're hammering. So I didn't put any stock into it at all, and I just keep doing my thing. Well, off to my right was a Montefiore Rose ticket. And this thing was recently logged. So that Montefiore Rose is so thick, no human being could travel through there without having their clothes completely ripped off and losing about a gallon of blood because, I mean, it was impenetrable on that side. 
And that was the side that I heard something coming up. And at first I thought, well, I spooked some deer. But it kind of started sounding like a human being walking. And, you know, if you've spent enough time in the woods, you can definitely tell the difference between animals and humans walking. And it sounded big. And I was like, what, what, what could this possibly be? But again, I just blew it off and went back to what I was doing. And it was not more than 10 minutes later, I started hearing this. I was like, what is that? And I'm like fixated on that area. I can't see anything. There's like a little blind knoll that goes down there. And he must have been down on that knoll. But the more I ignored him, the more aggressive that became. It was kind of like a dog. Right before he bites you, he kind of ramps up. He'll growl, and then his growl turns into a snarl, and then pow, he got you. Well, at the point I decided to run, this thing was going, and I mean, it was the deepest, loudest, like, reverberation. I mean, you could feel it all the way through your body. I was gone. I mean, I'm a big boy. I'm six one. I go three, three fifty, depending. And I, I mean, it was elbows and tennis shoes. I could hear it right behind me. And at some point beside me, chasing me out of the woods. Well, when I got back to the truck, I turned around and looked and here stood this creature with a hand on each tree, rocking side to side. And he had this, this grimace on his face and he was making that noise. He was going, and I don't know, it felt like an hour, hour and a half. I stood there and looked at him, but it couldn't have been more than a minute and a half. I got a real good look at his upper body. I got a real good look at those teeth. I mean, he had this look on his face, like, like I was done if he caught me. And that's the, that's the incident that I had with the male. Did he look like the first one that you encountered back in 83? Did they look similar? You know what? Um, I mean, for, for all intents and purposes, yeah, they kind of looked the same. They were dark. They were, they were hair covered. They kind of had like a human ape type look to them, but I got a much better look at him than I did at the one, from the ones in 83. Can you describe uh, more detail of its face or anything? Well, I'll tell you what. He had a chest. I don't know. If you, I, I, all I could think of is like Lou Ferrigno back in the days when he did the Incredible Hulk. He had like the biggest barrel chest. And, and you could see, even though he was hair covered, you could see all the definition of his muscle. Like... I mean, he was ripped. You could tell he was just a, a massive, massive animal. And his head, it almost looked like like there was no conjunction between his head and his body. Like he just, everything about him was just this massive ball of muscle. Even in his face, like you could see around his eyes, in his cheeks where he was grimacing, even his canines, his canines were the biggest teeth I've ever seen in my life. Um, but he was just so defined. When you heard him grunting, did it automatically take you back to the first time that you had your encounter? Did you think, Oh crap, here it is again. Or did you not know until you saw it? No, you know what? Uh, I, I honestly didn't put those two together until I seen a female and then it kind of all started coming together and that kind of was got me into, into pursuing these things. But it took, it took the next sighting before I really put together, you know, this, this is legit. Like, um, my first sighting was almost five hours away from where, where I was at. And here I am seeing them again. And, and, that kind of just clicked something in my mind, you know, that these are real and these aren't just confined to a small area, you know, like the mountains or, or, 
uh, remote areas. Yeah, they're not. They they're digging in dumpsters and everything else these days. We're hearing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, where my my two current sightings are, you're only um, twenty five minutes from the city of Pittsburgh, and uh, some really highly populated areas all around. As a matter of fact, I'm working on something right now with Sasquatch travel routes, where every year during the um, late fall and early winter, they're actually spotting Sasquatch crossing Mount Washington, which one side of that is highway and residential. And the other side of that is literally the city of Pittsburgh. Like you go through a tunnel on one side and when you come out the other side, pow, you're in the middle of the city. So I'm working on something with their travel paths and mating and all that, but they're definitely in populated areas. And you're right. I, I actually, when I was a teenager for a couple of years, I lived in Cranberry Township. I'm sure you know where that's at. Well, you know exactly where I'm talking about because that's the area. Oh, that's right. I mean, well, okay. I'm talking about McDonald, Imperial, Oakdale. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but that's the area that my farm is in, one of my farms. So, okay. yeah, it was a lot. I, I mean, we're literally 10 minutes from Cranberry. Okay. Yeah, I lived there from 84 to 86. So I was like, you know, in junior high school, but yeah, uh, it, you can go from being, you know, in a, in a town or even Pittsburgh, the city, and then, you know, you drive 10 minutes and boom, you're like in the, in the woods, in the wilderness. Yeah. You're in the booty. Yeah. Yeah. So it's perfect for them to, they probably sneak up and get as much look at the city and everything else that they can, you know? Sure. Yeah. Sure. And you know, there's, um, I guess there's a, a, a working hypothesis that they use, the waterways yes, for travel, you know, and uh, that area is loaded with waterways. Yeah, There's got- a couple of creeks and streams through there. Yep. Well, you got the three rivers there too, right? Right, right. The Ohio, the Allegheny, and the Monongahela. Mm-hmm. And you've got the uh, Yakagani that runs down further. So, you know, um, then there's a uh, waterway called Chartres Creek. And it runs literally from Pittsburgh all the way down into Greene County, almost West Virginia. Yeah, we think that they use waterways for travel. Why wouldn't they? I mean, it's a way to stay sure. hidden. There's always f- foliage, trees, plants, heavy dense brush right. around water. And right. it's a perfect way for them to, to travel and not leave footprints if they're walking through, right. the, through the water as well. So I always thought, man, if you could find a waterway where these things are traveling, you probably are going to find footprints along the bank somewhere. But uh, yes. haven't, haven't gotten that far yet. Well, there's some. Um, there's been a couple local accounts here on Chartres Creek that uh, um, a couple kayakers had an encounter, and they found like 16 inch wet footprints on the rock, and that was literally um, 10 seconds from the town of Bridgeville. Which, if you know anything about that area, Bridgeville is almost as big as the main part of the city of Pittsburgh. So, you know, um, yeah, that Chartres Creek is a real hot spot. And we're pretty lucky right here because we're no more than 30 minutes from Ohio and West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And Salt Fork, I think, is an hour from us. So, you know, we're, I, I call this the Bigfoot Triangle because we're we're smack dab in the middle of it. You guys are in a hot spot. That's, yeah. That's where they are. Right. Well, I'm excited to hear your, your most recent encounter, and I'm sure Brian and the listeners are too. When did this happen? Yeah. How long ago was this? Okay, so this was, um, this was the same year as my encounter with the male, but it was four months later. And it was the opening day of rifle season for Pennsylvania. Now, there was no way, shape, or form I was going back to where I seen that male to hunt. It wasn't happening. I used to go in the woods before dark. Doesn't happen now. I don't get out of the truck until the sun is up and I can see real good. So I made my way out onto a gas line that was probably, I would say, a good mile. Which a mile isn't a lot of distance, but it seems safe enough to me. So I get out on the gas line and I'm sitting there and I heard a couple shots pretty close. 
and I heard some crashing. So, of course, I flipped the safety off, and I get ready. Here comes this female. She comes down, she stops on the gas line, and she turns around and looks at me. Now, just to give you an idea of what it looked like where I was at, straight ahead was the gas line. Off to the left was all thick stuff. Now, off to the right is this overgrown tangle of Spanish olive and a humongous lake. And in that tangle are a lot of cave-ins from old coal mines. Off to my immediate right to my back is wide open field. She stopped on a gas line and she looked at me. And she turned and headed right into that tangle of monofor or um, Spanish olive. And I had never seen her again. Now, I had an idea that might be where they were at because I sometimes I go there and get this feeling like it's okay to be there, but other times I can't get within a hundred yards and that fight or flight kicks in and it's like, I'm terrified. Like I'm going to be tore apart. So even though it was just a brief sighting with her, my scope was on 12. I could see that she had breast. Her hair was a lot thinner on her chest area and she was a lot smaller. Like I estimate the male to be about nine foot. She was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of seven. It was just a real brief encounter, but it hasn't, it hasn't been a last encounter, but it was the last sighting with her. What do you think you've been so lucky to see them three different times and have more experiences? I think they're living on our farm. Honestly, um, we've had a lot of stillborn animals just disappear and we board horses. So we have like six strands of high tensile fence. It goes up pretty high. These animals will disappear. There's no drag marks. There's no blood. There's no fur. They're just gone. And over by that lake, I've found, I call it the birthing nest, but it's an old strip mine pine tree. And if you know anything about them, they kind of grow down in a canopy onto the ground. Well, this spot has three chambers in it. And it has a whole bunch of fresh pine boughs and stuff stacked up inside of it. Like if you were in there in a hurricane, you would never get a drop of water on you. It's that thick and that tight, but it looks real cozy and accommodating in there. Now, again, sometimes I can get close to that thing. Sometimes I can't get anywhere near it because something inside of me, I don't know if it's my own fear or if it's something they project, but it's the same way with the caves. I've seen tracks outside the cave going down in the ground when I could get there. It's not very often that they let me get close enough that I can actually inspect the area because they have some kind of ability but if they don't want you there they can stop you yeah it's almost like they can project a fear into you that says you need to leave you need to stay away yeah you know taggers do that they say uh, like in wherever they're from malaysia or whatever that people who are attacked by taggers like they kind of put off some kind of infrit or or electricity or something that kind of I don't want to say it paralyzes you, but it kind of, I don't know, messes with your senses or something. Yeah. Yeah, like Brian said, it's it's like an infrasound that they can produce to make you. Yeah, most big predators do that. Yeah, yeah. And And I have a feeling that these creatures have been here all along, and I just didn't didn't pay attention. I mean, when you're working on a farm, the last thing you're really doing is daydreaming and and looking into the woods. I mean, you know, there's work to be done. And, um, I can tell you that if you're not working, you're getting your butt kicked. So, (laughs) you know, um, I never really focused on it. And when I was hunting, I I wasn't looking for Bigfoot tracks or, or tree sign or, you know, I, I was kind of oblivious to it, even though I had my sighting in 83, 
like I said, I didn't put everything together until the female. And I think that kind of like confirmed to me that this is a species. If you hear Bigfoot, it sounds so singular. Oh, Bigfoot in California, Bigfoot. But if you think of him as Sasquatch, now, you know, that's when it came to me. I'm like, these things, this is a species. They're, they're everywhere. And, and seeing her kind of, kind of did that. Yeah. I think they're an ancient tribe of, uh, people. Um, I won't say humans, right? I don't know how you would classify them, but would you say they look more like a human than a, than an ape? Yeah, that's a pretty good question. I wouldn't say, I mean, I guess if you, if you look at it being that they're bipedal and they do kind of have like, I guess a human looking face to me, it didn't look human. I mean, when I looked her, at her through the scope, I'll be honest with you for a brief second. I thought about squeezing the trigger, but I hesitated, but I didn't hesitate because I thought it was so much like a human that it would be murder. I just hesitated because I thought how rare they are. And I get it. We need a body on a slab for, mainstream science to finally admit that they exist, but I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need that at all. I know they exist. And, you know, there's something. Um, maybe, I, I think maybe there, you know how during evolution there were offshoots that never quite continued. I just think they're early, early offshoots. Like, one step before Neanderthal is what I think. I mean, they don't seem developed enough to be Neanderthal, but then again, they're highly intelligent. I mean, these things know how to stay hidden if they want to be hidden. Yeah. I, I consider them kind of like a caveman, you know? Um, yeah. I think that's what they are. They're cavemen. That's what people, that's where that came from. Maybe. Um, but they are intelligent, and in the way they stay, they can stay hidden so well as a species, being so yeah. big as they are. You right. wonder, you wonder if there's more to them than just flesh and blood. You know. Well, you know, people say that they disappear in the woods. Like one minute they're there, the next minute they're gone. I don't know if I buy into that because I know I've been deer hunting, and if a deer turns a certain way, you can't see it it disappears from your sight. It's still there, of course, but it's just like, uh, I don't know if it's a trick of light or if it's something that they've figured out how to do over years and years of being hunted, but they can literally disappear right in front of your eyes and you would never know they're there until the tail flicks or the ear flicks and they move. So I think Sasquatch have adapted to that and they know how to do exactly the same thing. I don't think it's this, they step in and out of different realms of consciousness. I, you know, I, I, I don't think I buy into all that. Mm -hmm. I think this is a flesh and blood species of undiscovered primate. Or, you know, they're discovered, the government knows they're there, yeah. but they don't want us sure. to know. They don't want to come right. clean about it for whatever reasons. There's many reasons, obviously. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because... Um, you know, the black helicopters have been around a few times, and I don't want to go into all that, but oh, really? um, I think Uncle Sam knows all about it. Oh, yeah, when I first started talking about this, and I first started investigating things, I think I got a little too close a couple times on a few other properties, and there were some things going on that, you know, like I said, I don't want to get too deep into it, but there were a few unmarked black helicopters flying over the farm and there were some new trucks and stuff around and, and, and I'm not a paranoid person, you know, um, but somebody, I definitely poked somebody's interest, you know, and how many acres do you have right there? Or how many acres is there of woods? Is there just a huge area for them to, to thrive in? Oh yeah. Um, the part that we own, is almost 120 right where they're at. But it also borders old strip mine property, which is probably 
10,000 acres of nothing but strip mined um, property where there's just patches and rows of trees that go through from one water hole to another water hole to a oak grove, you know, um, sort of like um, fence lines where they could just travel these paths through there and never be seen. That's exactly what they're doing. And they're hiding out in those mines and everything else, I bet you. That's where they're coming from. Sure. I bet sure. You. I've been saying all along that they're subterranean. They've been living in these caves forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't and they? And I think when I mean, these nests, when we find these nests around and stuff, I think they're like um, like the lo- local travel lodge. You know, I believe that like that's a place they stay over when they're migrating. Because I don't, I think they're smart enough to know not to inbreed. And I think the breeding age males actually leave and go seek out other pods of Sasquatch to mate with yeah. so that there, there isn't that interbreeding. And I think that's why we're seeing them in weird spots like Mount Washington or whatever is because breeding age males and maybe even breeding age females are traveling off to other pods to mate. And then they're coming back to their, to their home range. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. I mean, why mm-hmm. wouldn't they do that? I bet you if you could go out in a ghillie suit when they weren't traveling through those areas that you were talking about and just lay down and hunker down for 12, 24 hours somehow, I bet you, you would, you'd have some activity. You'd see them coming through at some point. Definitely. And that's why I was telling you earlier on that I'm doing this thing in late fall, early winter with them, them traveling, I'm actually peppering Mount Washington with trail cams. Okay. And the real time trail cams, the ones that alert your phone or your laptop when it goes off. And I'm just peppering different areas so that nothing could possibly go through there without being seen. Yeah. I'll be interested to hear what pops up on. Yeah. Your no cameras. kidding. I'd like to see that. To let us know. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about it for a couple of years, and I got a buddy that I finally got him on board, and um, I, I had to scare the hell out of him to get him on board, but I got him on board, and now he's interested in in helping me out, you know, because he was one of those naysayers. So I took him out one night, and the rocks and the logs were coming so fast. And they were growling and they were like smacking trees and breaking trees. And I've never seen a grown man whimper the way he did. I mean, I'm telling you, this this dude probably still sleeps with the lights on at times because he was petrified. I think I gave him PTSD. But now he's he's like, I'll help you, whatever you want to do. Let's figure this out, you know. Cool. Yeah, so. It's nice to have a buddy to help out, you know. Yeah, he didn't even see one, and he he believes now, obviously, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were making some of the craziest noises. I mean, their vocalizations are incredible. It's like such a different range that they can can cover. Well, and they they have a language, too. You know, we've heard that they, they can talk to each other. You know, you've heard the, the Ron Moorhead Sierra sounds probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, I've never heard anything like that, though. No. You know, a couple of times I thought I heard people talking in the woods when I was hunting, but I can't tell you that that's what that was. Hmm. Well, could have been. You say yeah, you still you go out? Might have been. You still go out and hunt then, you said? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You think you're going to see another one? Do you want to see another one? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. This camera that I bought, I better. <laughs> Somebody's got to pay for it. Right. You know, um, that's one thing I'll tell you is my my bill for my toys has gotten a lot more expensive since these guys. Yeah, you know, the infrared expensive. cameras and the night vision goggles and all that, you know, uh, they're not cheap. No, we, we know that. No, not at all. Whether you're, whether you're out there with cameras or you're doing a podcast or you're, you know, whatever you're doing. I mean, it's right. Right. It involves a lot of work and hard time. I mean, these things aren't, these things aren't easy, right? No, they're not. You know, it's a lot of fun though. And, um, it is it's a life changing experience. That's for sure. Maybe one of these days we'll have our own experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, we just got what we're hoping for anyway. More exposure time is what we're shooting right. for. Yep. Right, right. You guys ever make it down my way? You hey. draw me a line, and uh, yeah, we. I'll help you out with that. We'd love to come check out your area. And oh, see what's heck going yeah, on. that'd be awesome. Yeah, like I said, that's just a prime area that part of the United States, uh, uh, Eastern Ohio, Western, Southwestern Pennsylvania, and they're all right there in the, you know, the mountain range. I mean, that's where they're at. They're thriving right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so funny too because like the Appalachian Mountains. I guess the Native Americans considered them to be haunted because of all the different cryptids, cryptids that live there. And it's just amazing. I mean, Sasquatch is definitely not the only thing here, you know. But to me, it's the most interesting. Do you have any other weird activity going on besides Bigfoot? Or have you seen any lights or anything like that? I know they... Sometimes people say they always see weird orbs and lights and stuff like that. Have you seen anything like that? Yeah, we've seen we've seen some crazy colored lights in the woods before. Um, the big thing around here right now, as of late, has been the Black Panther. A neighbor of mine swore up and down he had lost a calf to a Black Panther, and I'm like, I don't know, you know. Uh, before my Sasquatch experience, I would say you're freaking crazy. But now I can't really bring myself to say no to anything. You know, I'm going to say anything's possible. You know, there for a while they were having um, dogman sightings over in Greene County. And there's a guy down there that still insists that he's seeing dogmen on a regular basis. <sighs> Who am I to say he isn't, you know? Yeah, we'd like to get a hold of him too and see what he's got going on. Yeah, I, yeah, I can get uh, I can get um I can get in touch with him and have him have him get in touch with you. I mean, him and I actually went out on an expedition one night looking because I wanted him to show me. Mm-hmm. I heard some weird howls, but I can't tell you they weren't coyotes. Right. You know, there's a guy just to, what was it, last week he killed something that looks like a hyena. And I'll send you the pictures. It looks like a hyena in West Virginia. I see. And I almost want to say it's a dire wolf. I, I think I know what you're talking about. I've seen that on Facebook. It's like kind of got he's, like yeah, some, he's got like a bear hug on it around the neck. Yeah, it looks like a hyena. It, it looks like a hyena. Yeah, doesn't team. it? Yeah, a big hyena. Yeah. It's kind of got a some, humongous hyena. It's kind of got some weird striping to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now there's a guy who just posted another picture, a totally different guy with the same kind of animal. Oh, really? Okay. What is going on? And he's from West Virginia also. And that's why I say it kind of looks like a dire wolf to me. If you look at the old pictures in the zoo of the dire wolf, Mm -hmm. it's got those weird stripes on its hind quarters. Yeah. uh, If you don't mind, send me that picture again or send me that picture. Yeah. I'm going to see that. And we'll put it on our group page and. Yeah, I can do that, no problem, you know. So that's why I say I don't say nay to nothing, you know. Yeah. No, like, like we don't either. I mean, you know, we've we've had a lot of dogman encounters on the show, and I definitely believe they're real. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. So many weird things. If the, right. If the dogman isn't like a cousin of Bigfoot, the Sasquatch, then he's something that they cooked up in the lab. Yeah. Don't you see him being a, a, a biological entity, you know, like a, a, like a native species to the forest. I just don't see that, you know, unless, you know, like people, you got fat ones, you got skinny ones, you got big ones, you got ugly ones, you got cute ones. Maybe Sasquatch is the same way, you know, and like dog man is his dog face cousin, you know, <laughs> I got a real ugly cousin. <laughs> Why couldn't Sasquatch, you know? I want Dogman to be a government experiment. I really do. Yeah. I want it to be one because I don't want to know that these things are natural and out there running around and who knows where, everywhere. You know, I want to know. Have you heard the stories from the guys in Vietnam that say they were using them as tunnel rats? No. There's a guy on the internet that insists that when he was in Vietnam, our government was using Dogman as tunnel rats. And they would hear them go into the tunnels and they would hear these horrific screams and people being tore apart 
and they would be waiting at the other end of the tunnel, like these handlers to, I don't know, zap them, tase them, tranquilize them, whatever, and take them back to these cages and hold them in these cages until they had to send them into another tunnel system. Wow. This guy wears up and down that that was going on. There you go. We'd like to talk to that guy too. There you go. When I come across his link, I'll send it to you guys for you to contact him. He's amazing. He goes into like a three hour diatribe about dogmen in Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love to talk to that guy. Definitely get us in touch with him. Absolutely. Tom, do you go out in the woods? I know you hunt, but do you also just go out looking around and trying to see these creatures again or Oh yeah. Yeah. I try to go out three or four times a week. You know, and uh, weather doesn't matter, you know, because I figure weather weather doesn't really matter to them either. So it could be raining, it could be snowing, it doesn't matter. I try to get out there and kick around and see what I can see, you know. I like to use that gas line out behind my property because I could walk for 20 miles on that gas line. And it just takes you to so many different places, you know. That you should put up a, you should put a camera up on that gas line or a couple spots. I guarantee you they're using that as a travel way. Yeah, yeah, I thought about that before. The only problem is you get people around who like to steal them cameras. So what I'm thinking about doing is putting them up about twelve feet, fourteen feet up in the tree, pointing down, so that even if you walk past, you're not going to see it up there. Yeah, which is good for them also because most people just put them chest high I think these things know their environment so well they just pick those right out oh yeah easily yeah they're probably going to watch you put them up there to be honest with you (laughs) I mean probably yeah they may (laughs) yeah they're like look at this guy he thinks he's going to get us yeah yeah but yeah he thinks we're crazy look at him put them up high and cover them with a little bit of foliage if you can just leave the camera part sticking out and yeah lens part you never know You never know. I mean, you know they're there. You know uh, the areas they're in. And I guarantee you that that tree you're talking about was a bedding spot, you know. So I don't think they're leaving anytime soon. It sounds like they've been there for a while and they don't plan on going anywhere unless they're migrating. Right. Like I said, I think they've been here forever because as long as I can remember, we've had stillborn animals come up missing. Hmm. A coyote doesn't carry a 120-pound calf. No out of the field without leaving some kind of sign. And I was going to ask you, have you had any other live animals come up missing? Yeah, we've had some lambs come up missing. Um, We had one calf two years ago come up missing that was alive still. Mostly the lambs come up missing. And I think that's just because they're easy to catch. Just pick them up, carry them out of the fence, and there you go, right? Right, right. I mean, and they don't raise as much heck as as like a hog or a cow would. They're kind of they're kind of quiet, you know. So, I think it's just real easy pickings for them. Well, at least they're not doing and, it all the time. Obviously, hopefully. Right, and we leave a lot of our um, like our vegetables and stuff that we don't, you know, leftovers from the garden. We pile it up in the back corner of the farm every year i mean tons of pumpkins and tomatoes and even apples from the orchard and they all seem to be cleaned up i mean in a pretty timely fashion so and i started doing that just because i think it was for them you know yeah people talk about gifting rocks and all that or gifting tree i just uh, I, i just thought it might help them out through the winter you know yeah, and keep them away from your stuff, you know, your your livestock, hopefully. Sure, yeah. sure. Kind of taking a protective stance on them, you know. I was going to say, That's you, good. you probably don't find them dangerous, do you? Aggressive at times, I think, but not dangerous. Um, at least they haven't been dangerous towards me yet. Um, but then again, I'm not foolish enough to walk up and try to shake one's hand, you know. Um, <laughs> I have a respect for them, but... Uh, yeah, I don't see. I I think it's just like anything else. If you don't put them in a corner and and threaten their family, I think you're pretty safe. 
Right. I think if you corner them or if you threaten their young or their wife or whatever the case may be, I think okay. then you have problems. Well, same with humans. But I kind of took like a, um, a protective stance on them. You know, I kind of gave you guys a roundabout area, but not specific enough where anybody who's listening could hone in on exactly where I'm at. Right. Yeah, because I don't want people tromping around molesting their area or um, God forbid some gung ho fool going in there trying to shoot one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And honestly, if you would have shot her, yeah, you might've gotten some samples, some pictures, but sooner or later the government would have got involved. They would have come, they would have taken the body. They would have told you right. to, to remain silent or they'll ruin your life. Like they do other people. Right. Like we've heard. Right. So it does, yeah. you no know, good. I mean, like you said, you're happy you right. saw one, and that's what we're at. I mean, we just want to see one. You know, we don't we don't need, um, you know, hair samples anything like that. I don't need to have a picture. I just want to see one, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah. You're listening to the Cryptid Creature Show with Todd and Brian. We're glad you're here, and we hope you're enjoying the show. Don't forget to visit our website at www.cryptidcreatures.net. By becoming a member, you'll get access to exclusive videos, members only episodes early unedited ad free releases and even a shout out on an episode join us at www.cryptidcreatures.net and thank you for supporting the show there it is you know i don't carry um i don't carry a cast kit with me i don't carry dna co- collection stuff with me i don't want that deep involved in it cuz like you said then you get uncle sam involved in it then you got big troubles everything that my family has worked for all their life could be gone in a blink of an eye. Yeah, and you've already got helicopters. That's enough right there. You don't want to take that any further. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, I mean, it'd be cool to know what they know, what they're, why, you know. I would love to know what they know because I have a feeling that they've got some live animals in captivity. Oh, I'm sure they're smoking they and broad, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, I would love to know what they know. Yeah, but that goes for a lot of stuff too, you know, um, from the aliens to just everything, <laughs> you know, they do a very good job of deception with us. Sure. Yeah. I was shocked that they announced the alien thing and it- that's kind of how I was thinking is like, why would they tell us it was true? Like, what are they really trying to hide? that they're letting that out? I mean, mm-hmm. it's easy enough to tell your fighter pilots if you speak of this, you know, you're going to be in a plane crash and your family will never see you again or we'll just make you disappear. So they could silence their their pilots, you know. And the same with commercial airliners. Do you want to ever fly again? Do you want to support your family? Well, shut your mouth, yep. you know. They do very good at intimidation, that's for sure. But you got to be careful because you can't go down too many rabbit holes because they'll have you locked up with the white coat on and, <laughs> you know, um, you know, that's why I say I, I never say nay, but you still got to keep kind of an open mind on on things, you know. And I think most people who chase Sasquatch or investigate Sasquatch, they have a pretty good head on their shoulders. I mean, most. Yeah. I mean, you do got your yahoos out there that, you know, haven't got a clue. But so far, everybody I've talked to has been pretty cool about it. You know, it's been pretty intelligent. Yeah, same here. Yeah, the Bigfoot community is is great. I mean, we love oh, yeah. we love being involved in it. And ninety nine percent of your people are awesome. Once in a while, you get those jerks, but that's that's expected. Yeah, but they're few. For <laughs> Tom, it was great having you on, and our pleasure having you on and talking to you today. About yeah, it was. Encounter. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, man. I've been waiting to talk to you guys and 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 share my stuff with you and. Like I said, I'll pass on that other information to you, and I'll keep you posted on how things are going with my experiment. Please do. Please do. Yes. Keep us posted, yeah. indeed. When you do see another one, let us know that, too. Yeah, hopefully by the middle of winter, I got pictures, and I can come on and tell you guys all about it. Be great. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. All right, man. Well, we appreciate it again. You take care, bud. All right, Tom, All right, guys. You. you have a nice day. All right. We'll be you in too. Touch. See ya. Bye. Tom, I mean, that dude... Yeah, kind of crazy. I mean, can you imagine being chased back and then here comes your grandfather? And you, I mean, I would have been scared for my life. And then going down that, that oh, yeah. 
the side of the mountain like yeah not knowing if you're gonna die if you're gonna make it down <laughs> that's that stuff scares the hell out of me going yeah, up crazy. mountain sides like that it really does it freaks mm-hmm. me out i don't know why i could handle it. i mean he, they had to be i can't imagine some people's level of terror that that they go through when they when they encounter these things you know it's just oh yeah amazing i'm glad we got tom on me and, too that's uh, a good one and we're gonna keep our eyes out and ears out for more uh pennsylvania sightings because like we said that's definitely becoming a popular state man you ain't kidding i don't know what's going on over there well it is like we've said it is pretty much all the appalachian mountains right there that is true going through pennsylvania so that is true you know you got a lot of historic stuff in the eastern pennsylvania with all those the battles and everything back in the Mm -hmm. day so yep but hey let's not forget about our trivia question that we asked oh yeah the show that's right what's the answer the question was which state comes in third highest as the most Bigfoot reported sightings? I thought it was Michigan. Washington being number one. Obviously. Number two is California. Really? Yeah. Number three is Florida. Florida? Yeah. I said that wow. too. I'm like, you're <laughs> kidding me. Man. Now I, I think Oregon. Florida. Oregon yeah, was like five or something like that, surprisingly. And wow. Michigan, I thought Michigan would be up there, but Michigan was, was down there. So, hmm. yeah. I, I never thought Florida. I remember reading that before, too, and I was I was surprised before, and I saw it again. I was like, well, it's a good trivia question, so let's ask that. I mean, yeah. if I would have said number one, what state would Obviously. you Obviously, yeah. Washington. Washington. Right? That's too easy. So, Anyway, man, it was great hanging out with you. It was great having Tom on. Yes, it was. Listeners, we appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for being here. Yes, we do. We're going to keep putting out as many great shows as we can. And keep on listening. If you guys keep seeing them, we'll keep recording. Got it. All right, my friend. With that, I say we should get out of here. What do you say? See ya. See ya.